YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers uh, what questions from subscribers is is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team and we answer it in a video just like this uh, if you want to be part of questions from subscribers you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com for the patrons y'all can send it directly on patreon uh, team keep it clean i love y'all i appreciate y'all uh, speaking of the patrons shout out to all of our team keep it clean patrons um thank you for supporting the channel just a little bit extra uh and team keep it clean on this episode we once again have a special guest uh it is sunny from scg sports all the links to all of his media his social media his youtube everything will be down below in the description so we appreciate sunny joining us again for another episode of question from subscribers uh, but without further ado Let's get straight right, into first it. First question. Well, first set of questions came from my boy, Justin C. He is a patron. So here we go. First one is an ideal contract for Lamar Jackson. Hey, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well. Been enjoying your coverage during the offseason leading up to the draft. I have not had time to send any questions lately, but I have a few. Uh, but here's one for now. I was thinking about a possible contract that would be good for both sides, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, going into his fourth year, where other QBs like Allen and Mayfield have also not been signed to long-term contracts by their respective teams. Uh, my question is, what do you think of the Ravens offering Lamar a five-year contract in addition when his fifth-year option to make it a six-year extension from this season locked in through the 2027 season worth up to $310 million dollars? with 245 mil guaranteed and 110 mil guaranteed at signing. I'm no contract whiz, LOL, just thought of a few numbers and I figured I'd ask for your input. Do you like the idea of that possible contract uh, or, or what do you think would be a better offer? Can't wait to hear your thoughts on one of the videos. Keep up the great work, stay well, stay safe. And like you always say, make sure to tell someone you love them. Thanks engraving, love you bro, and go Ravens. Ooh, okay, appreciate it, love you too, man. Um, So, he said a uh, well, it will really be a five year, five year extension. It'd be a, make it a six year contract with the fifth year option. But so a five year deal worth up to three hundred ten million dollars. So three hundred ten mil, five years. That's sixty two mil per. If we're breaking it down like that, but if you're breaking it down three ten divided by six, that's 51.6, but you can't do that because the fifth year option would be that, that other year. Mm -hmm. Um, whew. what's the highest right now? I don't think my home, my homes, even though my home's a 10 year deal, I think average around 50, I think. Okay. Uh, between 48. So, so Lamar, this is shattering records. This is yeah. a deal. So there's a couple of things here. If you extend that contract, as soon as you pick up the fifth year option, and theory is a seven year deal, 310, but at, at, at top of that 310, you had to add whatever the fifth year option is in millions. I don't know how much it is. I'm assuming it's around 15, so that's 325. And then this year, I think it's only three, so that's 328.7. That's roughly what it will be, 328. So it will be 46.8, so still, that's my home type of money. Uh, look, I will say this. I'm all for, players always should ask for the max. Always. And people are like, ah, oh, this place should take a discount. No, because I know if my job asked me for a discount, I wouldn't be saying, uh -huh. uh, if YouTube tells you in Raven, hey, you know what? Start making a little bit less money. You won't either. And, and <laughs> all, of you, yeah, yeah, <laughs> all of you guys will never say, yeah, let me just take less money, mm -hmm. especially in his first contract, right? This is his big paycheck. So saying that, I think Lamar is going to break the bank. Raven should not pay him unless we win the Super Bowl next year, um, what Mahomes is making, right? Mahomes is clearly right now better than Lamar. I don't think we can right. dispute that, right? Now, Lamar's still a top quarterback in the league, and I think he's going to make around 43. So Dak right, Dak right now got 40, and we can say that, that Lamar has done more he than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? So let's say 43. So averaging around 43, and, and I think for Lamar – it will be smart if he says, okay, I I'm willing maybe to take closer to 40 with more guarantee money in case of an injury or whatever. Um, if, right now, extending him, I think is smart just because this year's cap on him is so low that if anything, you can maybe uh, put a couple million extra on his cap hit this year. Maybe next year, instead of having a 15 cap hit, maybe put it at 22. And then instead of 43, now you can be in the 30s. 
And if the cap increases, as the projections are, right. now Lamar's cap hit is not crazy moving forward. So it makes more sense as you pick up that fifth year to just go ahead and extend him. Okay, I appreciate that. And again, like we said, that was his first question, though. He, he came with some more. Next question from my boy Justin C. He said, this is the national viewpoint. It's Justin C. here with a different kind of question than I usually send, but thought it would be worth an email. Hope all is well. First off, and as a fellow Florida dweller, man, things have been crazy in Duval. Oh, you in Duval? You, shout out to Jacksonville. He said, trying to have fun on a weekend, LOL. Everything is packed. Yes. Florida has been open like crazy from a long time ago because y'all know Florida people are crazy. Anyway, <laughs> I like listening to Speak for Yourself with Marcellus Wiley and Emmanuel Acho. I agree. I like listening to them too, even though they be – anyway. He said they once talked about black coaches and their opportunities at head coach and GM and owner levels. Just to isolate part of that, I wanted to ask you – do you th I want to ask what you think the national media perception and the national fan perception will be toward the Ravens, Lamar, and the coaches, namely T. Martin and Keith Williams, if the Ravens have an exceptional year passing the ball and get to the AFC Championship game or beyond with league-leading stats through the air. How do you feel the media will portray the success? Who do you think will get the credit? And also, do you feel black coaches will begin to get better opportunities moving forward in the NFL? Well, sad to see coaches like Bienemy not get a position when he is so talented. Hope to hear your thoughts, and sorry for the super long question, but keep up the, the amazing work, and much love to all the team. Keep it clean. All right, so uh, when it comes to black coaches in the NFL, um, yeah, it, it can be sort of a, a rarity, um, uh, and, but like he said, uh, j just to isolate, he said he wanted to know if the Ravens, if they have an exceptional year passing the ball and they get to the AFC championship or game or beyond. So they have a lot of success this year. How do you think the media will portray the success and who do you think will get the credit? Hmm. I think from national media, I could see them uh, really giving the credit to Hobbs and to Giro. And the only reason I say that is because national media, they don't focus on the details. Now Hobbs, of course he would be, he would need to be, uh, a recipient of some of that credit because he brought in T. Williams and brought in Keith Martin. I mean, brought in T. Martin and brought in Keith Williams and G. Row too. Because uh, if the passing game does step up and take take it to is taken to another level, then uh, that'll mean Greg Roman he he listened to them that they actually had a voice. But I think from the national media, they won't give Keith Williams and T. Martin credit. And the reason I say that is because the national media they don't focus on the details. They don't focus on the small stuff. Like local media, they will focus on more of the small stuff. But national media, one of the reasons they don't focus on the small stuff is because they're covering big stuff from every team, big stuff from every roster, big stuff from every franchise. So they don't really go into the in-depth and detail and whatnot. Um, so, I mean, it's one of those things that we got to wait and see. But I do think if the Ravens do have a, a significant amount of success uh, through the year, this – could certainly lead to uh, bigger roles for a, uh, a Keith Williams and T. Martin, even Greg Roman. Maybe it's possible that maybe somebody would be like, "Oh, okay, maybe this Greg Roman guy, maybe he got some, so maybe he could finally actually become a head coach." And then either Williams or T. Because you know Ravens like promoting in house, especially yep. at different coordinator positions. One of those guys could get a. Well, actually, probably both of those guys would get a promotion because Ravens tend to do that a lot. If they like you as a coach. They will find ways to promote you and they will put you on because Ravens throughout. I mean, it happens on every team, but Ravens have put a lot of people on and gotten a lot of people opportunities. Um, so this could be just another stepping stone into the right direction uh, for more uh, black coaches, getting more opportunities in the future. So we'll see how it all works out. So hopefully we're in that situation at the end of the year to where the Ravens have at least reached the AFC championship game and have had a lot of success uh, through the year. Yeah, I would say this to add to, I think what you said is spot on, but if the Ravens offensively on the passing side go to top 20, right? Let's say they go to 20th, right? Um, so a couple of things will happen. Uh, you have to get credit to all parties involved because uh, um, Giro will still be the play caller, mm -hmm. right? And Hart will be the head coach. Now let's focus on the other two. Well, the other two will get the most credit. I agree with Raven, not nationally, but don't worry about the media. Other teams would recognize this. Now you might see these two individuals now become 
maybe it'll cease, right? It'll take a bigger role. That's and right. if zero leaves, definitely one of them will become OC like that, right? You think about this. We went uh, from Marty to Giro because mm -hmm. as soon as Giro started taking more control of that offense or, you know, he was the run coordinator, that offense looked better. Right. So what the Harbaugh did, like, okay, I need that guy to be the OC, not Marty. That could happen to Giro as well. Let's say that Ravens start a little slow and then Harbaugh gives, um, I forgot which one of the two is the passing coordinator, but he gives more control to, to that one, mm -hmm. to that coach. Um, mm -hmm then you might see at the end of the year Harbaugh saying like, okay, Giro, I need that guy to be the OC. Harbaugh, it's not that unprecedented for him, right? He did it to Morty. He was like, yo, I need you to let him be the uh, OC. So you can see that if the Ravens receivers take a step up, boom, you all these guys will be recognized. Right. And again, I think sometimes as Ravens fans, we focus on the media and focus on the peers. Look, how much Ravens coaches get hired. And I'll say this, Ravens, right, what we do is basically we get jobs to, I, I, Ravens are pretty good giving uh, head coaching, or not head coaching, but uh, the coaching job, the linebacker, running back, and all the other ones, to black or white. I think they're pretty diverse. Uh, the thing is, they get snatched, right? Right now you have a guy like Wink, and Wink is gonna be here until basically somebody hires him a coach. And what happens while Wink is there, everybody that is behind him starts getting jobs, right? right. So you might not see that the Ravens DC is a black coach, but it's because the ones behind him, they get hired. The linebackers coach and, and the D lineman coach and the safety secondary. And, and I mean, the Ravens just do that, right? That, that's how they do it. And, and it's been successful. So I think if you see progression in the passing game, those two individuals, will not be in the Ravens too long unless one of them becomes the OC. Yeah, perfect. Appreciate that. Now, another one of my guy Justin C's question. He, he brought it today. He said, this is the calm before the storm. Hey, what's up, Engraving? It's your boy Justin. Wanted to send you a quick question. The Ravens, to the best of my memory, weren't making blockbuster moves a few years ago when we went 14-2. and two. But Coach Harbaugh knew what they were trying to do, and success came in a flash. Maybe it's wishful thinking, but I was just thinking how amazing it would be if this – is like the calm before the storm where not too many crazy offseason moves happen. Maybe a few splashes in the draft and then bam, storm through the regular season uh, with a record of 14 and three to 16 and one. Oh yeah, 17 games. Uh, get a bye and win the first divisional round against the Browns and then beat the Chiefs in the home playoff championship game where Lamar beats Brady in his final Super Bowl appearance and Lamar's first uh, all while being a top 10 passing and top 10 rushing team. Woo. <laughs> okay. Damn. I know it's theoretical, but man, what if? Love to just hear your overall thoughts. Thanks for always providing great, positive, informative, and fun videos. Keep up the great work. And like Godzilla was when him and King Kong beat the robot, I'm out. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to, uh, what was it, Me Mechazilla? Megazilla? Whatever his name was. Anyway, um, wow. That, that would be great. We nobody would be complaining at all if that happened. That's dream. Um, because that's like, and this is like everything right here. For it, the the record he said fourteen and three or sixteen and one. Uh, he said getting a bye weekend or first getting in the playoffs and get getting a bye week in the playoffs. He said getting beating the Browns in the playoffs and then beating the Chiefs in the playoffs. Oh, that that whole that game. And Brady, it's Super Bowl. Yeah, and then top it off with Brady in the Super Bowl. And he said in Brady's final Super Bowl. So send Brady home. I mean, he already got, what, seven rings. So yeah. I mean, I'm sure he'd be yeah. fine. But yeah, man. Uh, and then he, then on top of that, he said top 10 passing and top 10 rushing. Now, one of those is guaranteed. I ain't got to say which one. But man, that this would be wild. I would love it, though. What? Well, I know you would love it, too. But go ahead and share your thoughts on it, too. Man. Look, I think if we are if we are a little realistic, top ten running, yes. And if you're gonna improve in the passing, your running attack will take a hit. But going from thirty second to ten, that is a huge jump. Like that's what I said earlier. Like if we are twentieth, I think that's a big jump still. And if you're twentieth and you you're top five in the running side. You are a great offense, right? If you're low teens and you're our top five running backs, I mean, you are excellent offense. So we to be top 10 in both is, I mean, you're talking about 
offense of our history, one of the best offenses in history. So we need to, you know, bring it down a little bit. <laughs> but if you're a top five in the running side, and like I said, let's say 18 to 20 in the passing, you're doing spectacular. And then this team is very, very difficult to just scheme off and almost impossible to stop. Because if you're top five running side, you got to scheme to stop the run. And if you're in the 18s, that means, because see, when they scheme us to the running side, now there's spaces to throw the ball. So if you can hit, you don't have to be crazy. If you can hit those open receivers, right. what are they going to do? What are they going to do? Because then what's going to happen is they're going to pull back. Oh, you're going to pull back. Now I'm going to run a four yards a clip. Oh, man, well, that, that I cannot stop you. Now you're a moving clock, first down all the time. I need to bring it down. Oh, wait, now they're hitting me. How are you going to stop this team? And then when everything is defended, then you have Lamar breaking down one, right? That mm -hmm. Look, I mean, it's going to be fun. If they can figure out how to make this passing game better they don't have to go top 10 they right. don't have to go top 10 but if they can if they can go really between 15 and 20 this passing game is perfect for this running game perfect mm -hmm. yeah exactly man that would because yeah a significant jump like you said even to 20 that would yeah. that would be a huge jump man that would be up 12 spots and with it's like with the ravens like and one, one thing that i think about when it comes to um the passing game and the numbers and whatnot, it's like the Ravens had the 32nd ranked passing game. Yeah. Um, and these dudes were 11 and 5. 11 and 5. And of course, Lamar missed one of those games because he was out. Um, so Lamar went 11 and 4, but Ravens went 11 and 5. 32nd, last ranked passing game. So you, you can imagine if they were to make a jump, even just some little improvements here and there. That would just that would be crazy, man. All right, and now my guy Justin see his last question. He <laughs> said this could this could have ended up being its own video if we wanted to, but anyway, he said, "Hey, Graven, just dropping a quick question this time. I wanted to know your thoughts on the AFC North power rankings as it stands without the 2021 draft." Mm. Just in case you get to this question after the draft, what would you grade the four teams before the draft? And if the draft has happened, did it change the ranking in, in your mind of any of these teams? Okay, so we ain't even got to worry about that because we are two weeks away from the draft. Uh, so this made it in time. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And as always, thank you for the content and keep up the great work. Appreciate it, Justin. All right, so ranking the uh, oof, ranking the AFC North teams. Um, hmm. Hmm. Mm, mm. Right here, right now, and where we are on April 15th. You want to start this first? I, I can do it if you okay. want. Go, go ahead. I, I think, I I think might... let's talk about number four. I think number four is the Bengals, right? I think is the Bengals are definitely an up and coming team. I talk about this in the AFC North. I like the moves they're making. Mm -hmm. the biggest problem the Bengals have is the old line. Right, up front. And with a bad old line, a quarterback coming from a knee injury, I don't even know if he's going to be ready for week one. I have to get the Bengals to fourth, even though they had the fifth overall pick, but this is pre-draft. Then the three is where it gets, starts getting interesting. But I think, just just think about what happened last year. This, you have to put the Steelers there. And this is why. I think the Steelers took a step back as soon as Bud Dupree went out, and they could have had the two big rushers coming on the side. Now that secondary got a little bit more exposed. Those that that pressure that the Steelers generate helped that secondary immensely throughout the year. As soon as Bud Dupree got injured, oh, uh, yeah. that happened in the Ravens game. You can see how that team. Well, they lost the following week to the the football team, and then you can see how that team was not the same on defense, and that offense was a roller coaster throughout the year. Right. Now saying that, Bud Dupree's not coming back this year. Uh, he signed with Tennessee. Titans, uh, Nelson, the corner, is not there. And they really haven't upgraded that team. They haven't sent anybody new to replace those guys. So saying that right now, I'll, and Big Ben being another year older, you can see how he looked more fatigued at the end of the year. Their running game was not good, and they lost Connor. And it's because they fun. cannot run, yeah, and because they cannot run the ball, that means they have to still throw the ball more. So saying all that, I think they do similar to last year start a little bit better than how they're going to finish as the year goes for Ben. And then two and one is where you have it between Browns and the Ravens. That's and, where I got tricked. That's yeah. where you got tricked for me at. 
Yeah, and, and right now I'm trying to think if 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 I detach myself as a Ravens fan, right? Just to try to be completely honest and fair, mm -hmm. I would say the Browns have done more moves to better their team this offseason than the Ravens have done to this point. Mm -hmm. And they both have the same records. They both have the same record. Uh, the Browns' problems were not on offense last year. Their offense was clicking, and they'll get Odell Beckham Jr. back. Although I think for some reason they don't play best with Odell. But anyway, they will have got happy. They will have him back, but their defense. We just know they, they signed JaVale Clowney. They signed uh, John Johnson on the for the safety. They signed Hill for the corner side, right? So, so they their problem was secondary. Got it better. Rushing, they have Miles Garrett, probably the best outside rusher in the league, and now they had Clowney to help him to avoid getting hit so many double teams. The biggest thing that the Ravens have – in favor against that matchup is they still cannot generate pressure and they're not that good between the gaps, between the B gap and the A gap. That D line is soft in that middle. They lost Ogan Joby in that linebacking course, not great either. So I think that's the point of attack for the Ravens. But detaching just on a head to head matchup, who will be better in record? You have to, you have to get the the edge to the Browns. Sadly, I think so. It will be the Browns right now, slightly edge over the Ravens, and then uh, and then you have the other two. Uh, but I, it's it's just a hair. I think the Ravens obviously can beat them, but right now they have made more moves that make sense over the Ravens. Yeah, um, yeah. Roster wise, if we're just going talking strictly rosters, uh, then yeah, the Bengals four, the Steelers three. Uh, and it's, it's very close with the Browns and the Ravens. But, yeah, I got to get the Browns the edge. Uh, and we know that the Ravens don't typically make the, the sexy moves or whatnot and uh, the splash moves and free agency. This is what they do, like, every year. Um, so we should be used to this as Ravens fans, even though sometimes we, st we still do get a little bit of a little bit frustrated here and there. Um, but And with the Browns, a lot of times they made a lot of splash moves and sexy moves, but it doesn't always translate to the field. Uh, last year, it definitely did, though. It, it helped out a lot. Um, but with the um, – they upgraded their offensive line. It did wonders for their team. It, it, it made all the difference in the world uh, with that squad. Now, they did have a nice squad now, but last year when they really upgraded that offensive line, it helped them be that much better. Um, Browns have some – Significant pairs. Um, at running back, they have Chubb and Hunt. We have Gus and J.K., so that's good. Uh, but at wide receiver, once he's healthy, they'll have Odell and Jarvis Landry. Now, we have Hollywood and Watkins, but I, you had to give the uh, the nod to Odell uh, and Jarvis Landry there. Um, but at pass rush, at pass rush, defensive end, they have Miles Garrett and they have Jadavian Clowney, like you mentioned. Um, our pass rush right now is is still a question mark because we're missing that that guy. Uh, our secondary is has been better than theirs. Theirs has been very banged up now. Denzel Ward he gets banged up a lot. They Greedy Williams was out the entire year. No, not the entire year for a significant part of yeah. the year last year. But it was Grand Delpit. He was out for the entire year. Yeah. Uh, so they should be getting some guys back, which should help them a lot. Um, as long as those guys can remain healthy. So, and then, like you said, they signed Troy Hill, who played for the Rams. They signed uh, Josh Johnson or John Johnson, the safety who played for the Rams too. And they've made uh, a few other significant moves too. Um, so they, uh, they, they definitely upgraded their squad, man. Uh, but their squad was already a contender last year. And even uh, they, they won their first playoff game in forever. They were just like us too. But um, they were like, oof. And that game with the Chiefs, that playoff game with the Chiefs, and just the way that it went. And, and I know um, Patrick Mahomes, he he came out of the game. Uh, oh, boy, that, that was a crazy game right there, man. Uh, who knows what would happen if Patrick Mahomes would have been healthy the whole time, but that game was crazy. I know Browns fans, when, when they lost, the way that they lost, it was like, ah, I just twisted their hearts. But, um, uh -huh. yeah, right now I would give – a, a slight edge to the Browns because they have made uh, not only moves, but they've made a lot of significant moves uh, when it's come to really upgrading uh, their roster. Yeah. The, the moves were strategically. It wasn't like, let me upgrade for upgrade. They went and found places where they were missing. Now, again, I think for us, and I don't know how you're feeling Raven, but for me, I, I'm concerned about edges. Sure. But I hate when a team can pressure me from the middle, especially with Lamar. Versus the edges, because 
we see Lamar making people on the edges look silly. Right. But when the pressure comes to that middle, he doesn't have, I mean, not, not him. Most quarterbacks don't have that time to react. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the middle, now he's escaping and he can just run to a sack versus when it comes to the side, he usually can juke the guy and still extend the play. So that's the silver lining, that linebacking core and that middle D lineman, they're not the best also for the running attack. So, so it's not me saying that I'll give the notch to the Brown doesn't mean that we cannot beat them. I still, I think we match well with them. But in the overall scheme for the 17 games right now, which I hate saying it, I have to give the notch to the Browns.